Last day of mini camp is over. I'll tell you what I saw, give you the news and notes. And who was this big physical guy I saw at training camp? I'll tell you all about it in just a second here on Locked On Jaguars. You are Locked On Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for joining me, your host, Tony Wiggins of the Locked On Jaguars podcast, where it's your team every day, and we thank you for making us your first listen. Also, reminding you very quickly to go and subscribe for free on our YouTube page, Locked On Jaguars. That's right. You can subscribe for free now for audio podcasts or wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you just check in every single day to make sure you don't miss an episode of Locked On Jaguars. Shout out to my everydayers, the everydayers of the Locked On Jaguars podcast. You're the reason. You're the why. That's right. We are here to give it to you the way you expect it and to the newcomers. Come on in, man. You won't be new if you come back twice. So uh, welcome into today's show quickly. I've covered this team for, as a pro, 14 years, maybe six more years if you add on to it. I've been around. I was a part-time credential guy, you know, over 15 years ago. But I saw something today in training camp that might be the most impressive thing that I ever saw. It's not training camp, mini camp. Might be the most impressive thing that I've seen. We'll discuss that. Segment two, we'll talk about who was here that wasn't here for OTAs. And then we'll give you some more news and notes. And I'll give you how I feel about this team as they head into training camp. First and foremost, I always talked about that tight end room, right? And we're going to touch a little bit on this in segment three as well. I used to be worried about that unit. Not worried about that group as much anymore. And I'm not going to be a, a prisoner of the moment and, and and be subject to all of this right nowism that I criticize people for doing all the time. However, I will tell you that just watching them, and granted, it's just rookies and, and a select group of veterans. Um, I can see the athleticism and the fluidity of that particular group with uh, the the rookie uh, out of Penn State, Strange, as well as Mr. Reyes. Samus Reyes is his name. Brenton Strange is the rookie. Garrett Prince looked well. Luke, Luke Farrell wasn't there today, but and we know Evan Ingram is still holding out on the um, on franchise tag, and we. Look, I'm not saying that uh, the I'm not speaking for the Jaguars when I say that I don't know if they really want Evan Ingram. This is my opinion. I'm not sure if I want Evan Ingram on a long term deal at this point. If they're going to have some other guys really, really step up, that is going to be a luxury to have another tight end under contract for a long period of time at a really good number, especially when come next year. They got a pass rusher, they got a corner, they got a safety. And of course, they have the quarterback and the number one wide receiver that they're going to have to check for in order to try to get them signed long term. Um, we may see Evan Ingram play on that one year deal uh, if he doesn't give the Jaguars what I believe is going to be a little bit of a bargain. But we'll see. Like I said, I'm not talking for him. They, I might be totally wrong. Nobody told me this. It's just my opinion because when. I saw what happened at OTAs with the tight end group when he wasn't there. And I saw what I saw today. And I think they are quietly hoping that their player development really, really works with Luke Farrell, with the addition of Britton Strange uh, in the second round of this year's draft. OK, that's a high draft pick for a tight end. But he's a dual threat now. He's even blocker and he can catch. He's not just a move tight end or just a blocker the way. You saw Evan Ingram and Chris Manhurts. Now, nah, this is a combination of them both. But I saw somebody today named Samus Reyes. Now, Reyes is a former basketball player who's really, really raw. And he has had a stop in the NFL. He was with uh, Washington, the Washington franchise. And he was listed at 6'5", about 260. Let me tell you what I noticed today. And I talked to somebody that's on staff and I say, 
where did y'all find this dude in muscle cave somewhere and where has he been he's, like, well, he's been around for a minute you know he's real raw but he's gonna get it now this person was not a coach but they were a pair person on staff that i would say understands that position and understands football this young man is six foot seven about 245 250 pounds he listed at 240 with the jaguars and he's from tulane where he played basketball he's six seven not six five he is every bit of six seven there are two guys that are really really tall at those skill positions right one of them is it's not really a skill position one is the tight end reyes the other one's george smith who we talked about before I think Walker Little goes six seven. Those are the tallest guys on the team, right? And Trevor six six. He's right behind him. Reyes makes everyone out there look small. Not only does he make everyone look small, he's extremely muscular. He's got these real big legs and these big biceps. And I told a joke. I said if I could go back thirty years and walk down a beach in Brazil where I hear Reyes is from, I said for one day I want to be that guy. You know, telling the damage old wig would do if he was built like that in one day. In fact, it might be some damage that I've already done, but still, I would want people to look at me the way I think people look at him. If and that doesn't mean he can play football, right? Tim Tebow looked great at tight end, he looked muscular. But I'm gonna tell you something if this raw prospect ever, ever really gets it and grasps it. He is going to be a cultural superstar, a cultural superstar here in Jacksonville. He, he, I'm telling you, I know the kind of stuff that the fans hang on to. If you haven't seen him, look at the thumbnail or go Google, but do it with pictures of him in a Jaguar uniform because I think he's improved his physique. This is going to be someone in the preseason I know fans, the ladies too, are going to be rooting for I don't think I've ever seen a person other than Greg Jones, Florida State, shout out to Florida State legend and Jaguars legend Greg Jones. Greg Jones is probably the most put together player, including Tebow. Greg Jones made Tim Tebow look like Popeye without a spinach. Greg Jones was cut. I mean, rocked up, head to toe, muscles in his face everywhere. This dude looks just like that. If you think I'm joking, ask somebody or go see. And if he turns out, he runs so effortless, effortlessly and fluid. He has, just has to make sure he catches the ball all the time. And he has to understand when he comes in and out of his routes that the ball is going to be placed right there. But I'm telling you, Sam is raised. He's number 19. He's going to be a, a favorite of a lot of people in training camp. He's already a favorite of mine. And I want him. To, if he can ever put it together, man, it looks like Jimmy Butler uh, and The Rock. Not Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Graham and The Rock came together and somehow this dude just popped out uh, of, of them shaking hands or something because he is that, that impressive as a physical guy. And I'm going to tell you something about Trent Baalke. The one thing I noticed, and we'll discuss this in, the, in segment three, he goes through these traits. But one of the secondary things that helps, uh, you know, that, that really makes that stuff come into fruition is when you actually see all of these guys on the field together. They look like a big, physical, well-conditioned football team. Doesn't win one game, but I'm telling you, they are one of the all-airport teams, whether they can win games or not, when you look at how big and the physicality and the length they have at every single position. All right. We're going to give some more news and notes from training camp, but we're going to talk about who was there, who was actually there today at training camp that was missing in action a little bit at OTAs. And I'll tell you, it's Josh Allen. And I'll also tell you exactly how he looked as well. We'll do all of that here in segment two on Locked on Jaguars. Hang out with us. Make sure you don't leave because we got it all coming up for you. But first, I have to let you guys know about today's sponsor, and that is FanDuel. FanDuel is the absolute truth, man. 
and you need to be a new customer right now at FanDuel. You need to make your way there because customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Now, NBA Finals are over, but baseball is in full effect. Football is on its way back. You need to start greasing up and loosening up and figuring out how to get your information off FanDuel and turn that into success. There's no better place to be for all of the baseball action than America's number one sports book, and that's FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on, all caps, and you'll get a no sweat first bet. That's if you don't win, you'll get bonus bets up to $2,500. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, we're running it down here on Locked On Jaguars on this beautiful day. We attended the last day of mandatory minicamp, which wasn't that mandatory for veterans, except a select group of veterans. I think it was guys who either weren't here before or who were excused or guys coming back off an injury that they wanted to see. And then you just got guys in the building that didn't want to leave. They say four year old cars running around in the building. They told him that they didn't want to put on any cleats today. But uh, shout out to four year old Con too, because he's like my favorite Jaguar signing of free agency. He's right there neck and neck with Clay as Campbell because he exemplifies professionalism and he plays well when he's on the field. And for all the talk that you hear about him, he works extremely hard, man. Uh, they even came up with a name. They call him the hardest working show man, show the hardest working man in uh football because they say he's like james brown they call him james brown so shout out to foy oluwakan for earning that money man and really really doing whatever he can to make sure this football team advances someone that the coaches were happy to see and someone who looked like they were happy to be back and someone who looked like they have been putting in a ton of work because he doesn't have a shred of fat on him is josh allen the edge rusher who will play this year under the fifth year uh option obviously josh allen uh wants a new deal uh, we all know that uh, a long-term deal it is a big year for him in order for him to get that done if he starts out the season lights out they may even renegotiate something during the season or franchise tag him next year so he doesn't get away and then try to work out a long-term deal with him but uh so far so good for josh allen he looks the part he looks like he's really really been working hard has a great rapport with the rest of the team Took a leadership role today and was really coaching some guys, some linebackers, uh, in particular, Yashir Abdullah, where he really, really was talking them up and yelling at him from the sideline and Abdullah listened. And he was right there like a coach when those guys were coming off the field. So he's still Josh Allen, still directing traffic, still doing a little bit of extra work on the sideline with guys, still being a leader for this team. So nothing has changed. And, you know, I know some people may think that I blew it out of proportion when he wasn't here. No, I'm going to clarify something. And I wish he would have walked with me today and said, I heard what you said about me because I'm going to tell you exactly what I would have told him. It wasn't about you. It was about fans. It was about fans not understanding that this is a business. And whether you like a guy or not like a guy's personality, business has to happen. So when a guy goes about doing business, even if it's somebody you don't like, you have to understand that that's the same thing that a person would do if it was somebody that you do like and you do like their personality and you do approve of it. I just don't want people, and, and, and I know this is a sensitive subject sometimes, but I don't want people to have to like a guy in order to want to be fair about a person. So as I saw all of those people get on players before, and I know it's not apples to apples, but when guys' contracts were up and they wanted to say, okay, well, I'm just going to go work out somewhere else or I'll be in camp, whatever, Fans didn't really take to it too nice, but they took nice to it with Josh. And I said, no, I want y'all to keep that same energy and not necessarily beat up Josh, but learn to not beat up on the guys that that exercise their business rights the same way he does. And you can't do it just because you don't like about. But I know I'm probably speaking to this laptop and nobody else because fans are going to fan and people are going to do what they do. But I just wanted to point it out and call it out. So. He didn't ask me and he probably won't. And if anybody else thinks or wonders what it is, yeah, that's what it is. Now, I've also said that 
Josh Allen's name probably rings out better than his play, at least statistically. But numbers don't tell the whole story. But statistically, no, he hasn't really lived up to uh, what everyone believes his name is. Doesn't mean he's not a real good football player. Doesn't mean he doesn't deserve $75, $80 million with $50 million guaranteed. Doesn't mean any of that. It, it, what I'm just trying to say is when Josh Allen is your number one pass rusher, you don't usually use the number one pick on another guy to be your number one pass rusher. That's just the way it goes. You can supplement a guy like that and then use that pick somewhere else, like maybe along the offensive line or on a shutdown corner, which were all available last year, but the Jaguars chose to do this. And I know you need more than one, right? But they got them both, and guess what? Going into the offseason, Doug Peterson said again that improving their pass rush was priority number one. So that would tell you that they probably don't have everything that they want at that position and that they need to do uh, a bit of an upgrade or the guys that they have have to play better. And on numerous occasions when we asked about Trayvon Walker last year and even this summer, they were absolutely satisfied with the way he was playing and on a couple of occasions off the record, we were even told that Josh needed to play better. So there you go. So I'm just the messenger. I'm not, I don't have an agenda when it comes to Josh Allen, but I'm going to be honest with you when I say I saw him today and I'm like, I see why he got picked where he got picked. I see why they like him. You look at his work. You look at how he approaches it. It's the exact same way that we were just talking about for Ola Khan or uh, 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 Calais Campbell even Yannick Ngakwe, nobody questioned his work ethic when he was here. That's what it is. He's one of those guys. He's a hard worker. He gets after it. Alan Hearns was that type of guy when he was here. Guys that when they were on the field, and whether y'all want to believe it or not, Jalen in practice was a hard worker. Uh, Tayshawn Gibson. Uh, Andre Sisko is an extremely hard worker. I'm just starting to notice that they they get guys on this team that are not only they have these physical traits, but they have these psychological and emotional traits too, where they want to come to work. So these football playing Jesse's, as I, I used to call them back in the day, you can't make people love the game, right? They either do or they don't. And Josh Allen is clearly, clearly someone that absolutely loves the game of football and does things the absolute correct way. So shout out to Josh Allen. We're looking good coming into training camp and being a leader like he always was. That's, in my opinion, or into mini camp, but during the OTAs, that was missing a little bit. Like you had other guys doing it too, but you can never have too many guys, especially guys that are proven to come in and keep working on the uh, the psyche and the uptick of the team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Lots of enthusiasm at practice today for a lot of guys. We mentioned a couple of them today. Uh, already with uh, Samus Reyes and, of course, the addition of uh, bringing back Josh uh, Allen to practice. I'm going to go over some other names, and I'm going to tell you some position, some position groups that I think have been fortified to be as strong as they have been around here in an awfully long time. We'll do all of that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. All right, third and final segment here on Locked on Jaguars. We thank you for making us your first listen because it's your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers for attending and showing up every single day. And any new people, I hope you love it. I hope you see the graphics on YouTube or wherever you happen to get your podcast. Make sure you tap in every single day. It's free to subscribe on YouTube. So my overall impressions of the Jaguars, whether it's between OTAs and minicamp, is the athletic. They've gotten better. I turned to somebody today. I don't know who it was. It may have been Demetrius. It may have been John Shipley or Jamal St. Cyr. It's, it's somebody. And I said, you know what? They might have had a pretty good draft because Yashir Abdullah is running around and he's better in coverage. You know, you think he was just like this undersized pass rusher and he's out there with the linebackers, of course. Abdullah at 6'1", 240, and trust me, he's every bit of 240, and he's all a 6'1", but he doesn't have these real short arms. It doesn't look like it anyway. I don't know what his measurables are. He runs around really, really well, and he covers downfield better than you thought. So he wasn't just a guy who was being used as an undersized pass rusher. He's a guy that looks like he's got he's got something in his step, man. And, and 
He has the form and the technique also to, to cope, you know, back down into the flats has a way of squaring himself up whenever it's time to make the tackle. Of course, they're not hitting, but uh, he does not, he does not look like a type of dude that won't be a real physical football player at the point of attack. I don't think he's going to have a problem tackling anybody. Right. Looked very, very good. Someone else I noticed number 47. Uh, when you get to training camp, Deshaun Dixon, of course, he was here last year, second year play out of Norfolk state looks a lot more thick legged, but, Looks to be in really, really good shape at six. What is he? Deshaun, 6'4, 247. He actually looked bigger than that because his lower body looks so big. Very fluid athlete, moved around a lot, and I really, really liked it. Uh, Jordan Smith was out there again today with no knee brace, all 6'7, 250 pounds out of Alabama, Birmingham, his third season. Looked like a good football player, uh, but you never know until the pads come on. But he looks hungry. He looks like he's determined. He came over and said something to me on his way into the locker room. He says, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go ahead and just show everybody what I can do. Good-looking player. Um, Ventrell Miller, I noticed. A little bit limited, but he was getting out there, moving around. He just looks like – Ventrell Miller looks like – and I'm, this is not in a bad way. Ventrell Miller looks like the kind of guy who um, – he's a thinker. You ever seen a young guy who thought and played the game in some sport the way a seven or eight year vet? That's what he looks like. It, it looks like nothing is too fast for him. Uh, he's not the greatest athlete in the world, but he still looks like a guy that where nothing, nothing is too fast for him. He's not tall. He's six feet, about 232 pounds, a bit of a throwback linebacker. But I think Ventura Miller has a little bit of a chance to help that group. So, the edge needs to improve, but the versatility of the linebackers is something that I noticed. Um, a lot of guys that I expect to contend, DJ Coleman, a rookie out of Missouri, he's another tall one at about 6'5", 263. He also looked good in space. Doesn't mean that everybody I mention is going to make the team. Doesn't mean that everybody I mention is going to make this huge, huge impact. But what it does mean is you'll have some guys to look at as we get into training camp. Of the guys that were still there today, the, the veterans were excused, obviously for uh mini camp there are a lot whether it's christian braswell a rookie out of rutgers who played for a really good coach in greg shiano especially on the defensive side of the ball divide wilson who's tall uh 21 latavius brinney from arkansas he's 6'2 215 pounds he's a safety but these guys move very very well so i'm sitting there thinking between them and and some of the second year players like monteric brown and greg jr they're going to find somebody that can play the slot. Now, I know everyone wants to put Antonio Johnson there. At 6'2", 198, he did float around a nickel a little bit, but he's not necessarily a slot guy. He's a nickel when you go into a sort of a big nickel where you want a safety on the field to guard a tight end. But he also can, can play traditional safety, and I think he gives them a, unique, a lot of unique bodies in the secondary. We know who the starters are. We know who the first-line players are. Chris Claybrooks, he was there. It's his fourth year, but he was still there. He's also a good special teams player. So, yeah, a lot of people. Eric Hallett was getting a lot of attention. A rookie out of Pittsburgh, 5'11", 190. He's number 40. Get you one of these when you get to training camp, one of these rosters. If you're not watching on YouTube, I'm holding up the official Jaguars uh, 2023 roster as the numerical roster as well as the alphabetical roster. But it shows you how many people that they have at each spot. And I'm going to tell you something. They look really, really good. Also pay attention to the defense, guys on the defense that uh, are vying for uh, playing time along the offensive line or vying for a roster spot. Tyler Lacey, who I don't think will have a problem making a team. He's a big physical guy. Henry Mondo, they look different. They're, they're, these guys are 279, 280, but they look like they're 295, 300. It's because of the type of physical condition, uh, conditioning they're in. Uh, Michael Dogby. Another signing is like 280 pounds. Looked at me, gave me a little head nod. He looks bigger than 280. So don't let the numbers make you think that they're smaller. They're bigger, more physical, more muscular. Just probably not. They don't have a team full of fat guys is what they don't have on defense. There's a lot to monitor, a lot to watch out for going into training camp. I know I talked to defense today. I hit a little bit more of that offense uh, with our next show. Make sure you tap in, tune in, do all of that stuff. And take care of each other until the next edition of Locked On Jaguar. You are Locked On Jaguar.